Maggie, my best friend, and I met during our freshman year in college. We moved in two years ago and are now housemates, until something like this happened. In 2015, my closest buddy went on a spring break to a different state and met a guy on Tinder. When she returned to university, she immediately told me about him and how wonderful he was, and how they had only gone out to dinner once, clearly a lie, but that they were constantly talking. I became excited and wanted to see a photograph she had only ever shown show me one photo of him. He's practically been her entire universe for the past five years. She never stops talking about him. Her nose is always buried in her phone. She becomes clingy when he takes too long to respond to texts. And she sobbed to me a few times because she's seen him around other girls on his social media. My roommate doesn't have social media. I had inquired several times as to why they had never met up again, and she stated that they were both too busy and unable to afford the trip. I even informed her that that if he wanted to stay with us, we could save money. Every year on Valentine's Day, he sends flowers and gifts. They've been dating for quite some time. So my roommate went to work yesterday and picked up a shift. When our doorbell rings, I open it to find a man. When he says hello, do I respond with a puzzled hello? Then he reaches in and snatches me up in a hug. I thought you were working. He begins. I was expecting to see your roommate so I could surprise you when you returned. And I'm completely shocked. I I instantly get down and step back, letting him know that I have no idea what he's talking about. My brain is unable to comprehend what is taking place. Then he asks, Maggie? With a puzzled expression. And I'm thinking to myself, no, that's my roommate. I'm even more perplexed because my roommate and I have nothing in common. Then something clicks and I thought to myself, oh my god, is he the guy she's been dating? So, are you Adam? I ask, and he gives me a slow yes. I got excited and said, I can't believe you've shown up. Oh my god, I bet Maggie is going to flip out. His demeanor shifts dramatically. He inquires as to what I am discussing. Maggie is my name. I tell him no, because I'm Maggie's roommate. I'm still lacking something that he's only thrown together at this time. He just exclaims, holy fuck and appears as if he's at a loss for words he eventually asks if he may take a seat i extend an invitation to him he then goes on to say that he's been thinking he's been talking to me for the past five years every picture of maggie he's ever seen has actually been of me i'm utterly taken aback and we first have no idea what to say to each other so he pulls out his phone and shows me the evidence he has a lot of images of me saved on his phone and he gave me proof of her sending them to him in their texts. I was and continue to be sick to my stomach. I take out my phone and show him photos of her that are real. I suggest they talk when she gets off work and he agrees and he's irritated to the point of rage. I propose that we phone her first to let her know he's arrived. So I do that and she becomes enraged. She's stating that she won't be returning home. She tells him to leave and that she will not communicate with him. He dials her number and begins yelling at her. She eventually returns home when everyone has calmed down. He's hurt and accusing. She's crying and I'm uncomfortable sitting there. He screams at her, no, I thought I was in love with your roommate. When she tells him she's still the same person he has feelings for and this causes her to absolutely break down. So I suggest that he depart for the night so that everyone can have their own place. He agrees and as he leaves, she becomes utterly insane and begins throwing spit around the living room. When she tells me she despises me. I burst out crying. It was a whole mess. I ended up calling Adam primarily because I was curious about the photographs she had provided. She sent pictures of me in my underwear and nudes that aren't me or Maggie. So we're guessing she found them on Google. He's in a poor mood and is having a hard time dealing with everything. I assured him that I didn't blame him for the underwear photos or anything. He ended up telling me that they had FaceTimed, but she would only show the top of her head or hair which is dyed a similar color to mine, which I had never noticed before, but now I think it's weird. And her excuse was that she didn't want to look bad on video, was self-conscious, didn't have makeup on, and so on. He claimed that he didn't find it strange. I don't know. He also informed me that he had tried numerous times to organize meetings with her, but she always came up with 
excuses. Until this moment, he said he was mostly content to communicate by text or phone. He also stated that he will try to contact her one more time to talk about everything, but that he will be moving on. As for me, I'm not sure I'll be able to break my lease just yet, so I'm going to move out and in with a buddy till my lease is up. When I returned to my apartment, we spoke briefly, and she have apologized, but she remains nasty and defensive, so I'm going to give her some breathing room. I pity her, but I don't think our friendship will be able to survive this ordeal. Anyway, this has been a load of nonsense, and I'm sure I would be okay now. I'm in my late 20s and I have a really successful career. I make plenty of money, I own my own house, and I have two cars. But I've always failed in relationships. I had a long-term relationship in my early 20s, but I broke up with him because he just wasn't pulling his weight. I paid for our extravagant lifestyle. He would basically help me with my work and then expect me to pay him. Also, I paid the rent, I paid for the cars, and I paid for every single dinner date we ever had. We also had a joint bank account, which was a huge mistake on my part. Because ultimately, I was the one earning all the money. After four years of dating, I decided to break up with him and I told him to move out of my house. I felt free and I started dating right away. I met this guy one night and he was amazing. He complimented me all the time and made me feel really good about myself. But here's the problem, I tend to fall in love really easily. After that night, that guy and I would talk every single day. He would come over to my place and we would have dinner. But the good thing about this guy was that he had his own money and he was pretty wealthy. His family was also really well off. I totally saw myself marrying this guy, but then eventually we broke up. I found out that he was cheating on me, but also he was doing some illegal stuff in the background. I decided to forgive him for the cheating and everything, but he still wanted to break up. I mean, I was totally shocked because I was forgiving him, but he had no intention of being in a committed relationship with me. So once again, I was single. I decided not to focus on guys at all. Instead, I started going out with my friends and focusing on my career. But you know how it goes. When you're not looking for love, it just knocks on your door, which it kind of literally happened like that. I had some friends come over and they decided to bring some other people that I didn't know. There was one guy that showed up and I knew of him because he was friends with my other friends. He was really cute and we hit it off right away. He asked me out on a date, but I kept saying no because I just didn't want to get into anything. But he really won me over with his personality and I ended up saying yes. And after our first date, I literally thought I was falling in love with him. Like, here I go again. This time I knew that if I got into a relationship with this guy, he had to marry me. So early on in the relationship, I told him that my intention was to marry him. And if his intention wasn't to marry me, then we needed to stop dating. He promised me up and down that he did want to marry me, so I stayed in the relationship. I knew that I wanted him to move in right away, which I know sounds crazy, but I was kind of desperate at this point. My goal in life was to have kids, and I just wasn't getting there. It took me about a week to convince him to move in, and he finally said yes. But he basically told me that he wanted to continue living his life the way he had been before. In other words, he wanted to continue hanging out with his friends whenever he wanted, and I said fine. I was just happy he was committing to something. Then I knew that I needed to get pregnant as soon as possible. My goal in life is to be a mom. And because I had so many failed relationships, I knew that I needed to make this one work. The first two months of living with my boyfriend were really good. But of course, I quickly wanted to get pregnant. I also knew that the only way he would marry me was if I got pregnant. So I got to work. I stopped taking the pill and I didn't tell him, which I know sounds terrible, but here's the problem. I was not getting pregnant. I was off the pill for three weeks and nothing happened. I got so desperate, I went to the mall and got a pregnant woman to pee on a stick, which of course came out with a positive result. I went home that night and showed my boyfriend the stick and he was so surprised. He asked me if I was taking the pill, which I said yes, but he got really upset and told me that I probably got pregnant on purpose, which I denied. But then he said the magical words. He said, I guess we have to get married now. I was so beyond happy, but the problem was that I really wasn't pregnant. So I started gaining weight like crazy. Anytime he left the house, I would eat tons of junk food. I would go late at night to the supermarket and buy tons of junk food. I get Doritos, chips, cookies, and cake and ice cream. I basically ate anything that was sugary. Two months later, I had gained about 30 pounds, and it looked like I was really pregnant. But my relationship started to fall apart. My boyfriend was upset all the time, blaming me for having gotten pregnant. Six months into my fake pregnancy, he decided to break up with me. I begged and begged him, but he said he didn't want to be with me and that he needed to be free. That's when I dropped the whole charade and told him I wasn't pregnant. He literally blew up in my face. He actually grabbed a chair and threw it into the TV. He grabbed his stuff and ran away. Of course, he blocked me from everything, so I couldn't contact him. Three days later, two of my cars had been stolen 
fallen from my driveway. And part of me knew that it was him. But a week after that, he actually reached out and asked me if I wanted to try at the relationship again. But here's the thing. He doesn't have much money, so he can't live the lifestyle I was giving him. I'm pretty sure he only wants to come back because of the money. But I kind of still love him. What should I do? Am I the asshole for moving out of my parents' house after they expected me to pay rent for my room? Yeah. What a dick. You thought you wouldn't have to pay rent, dude? Well, this ain't a free fucking country. Wait, hang on. Before my 18th birthday over a month ago, my parents started talking about how they expect me to pay for rent than half of the bills if I expected to stay there. Half of the that's, bills? That's insane. That wasn't the problem. The issue was what? they were expecting me to pay more than $1,300 a month for my tiny ass room that I share with my little brother. In Not including half of the bills that they expected me to pay. I 1300 know. plus half the bills? Yes. I want to know what the fucking like, housing market is in this area, because that's an insane price. Most apartments in our city are around that range, but that's for the whole ass apartment. Not a single bedroom, plus sharing a space with everyone else. Most of my paycheck would just be going to that then. I don't have a problem with helping with bills and paying for my room if they made the rent to be lower. They said that's how much they agreed on, so that's what I'd have to pay if I want to keep staying there. That's what the parents agreed on, not yeah, the kid. Correct. Ah. That the, makes sense. The, the parents are just practicing to be slumlords. Yeah. They're getting you ready for or the maybe real they're world. I was going to say, maybe they're preparing him for future slumlords. <laughs> yes. Let, yeah, okay. <laughs> Listen, son, it's, it's going to happen out there. I'd rather it happen under our own house. <laughs> where maybe I know I'd make son. a buck. If you're you going to get taken advantage of, I want it to be under my roof. So I said, fine. And I talked to one of my friends I already knew had his own place, but was looking for a roommate. I ended up going with him, and he added me to the lease. My own room and bathroom, plus the total for rent and my half of the bills, is way less than the rent by itself that my parents expected me to pay. But the thing is, they're super mad at me for leaving. My mom ignored me when I moved out, and my dad kept saying how he was disappointed in me. How, why? What? For a while, they were hoping to rely on me with helping out with their mortgage payments on the house, also with the bills. So now that I've chosen to leave and said, my dad says I'm going to leave them really struggling, and he can't believe I decided to be selfish instead of helping my family out. It's, it's I just, these parents are nuts. Yeah. This dude's not the asshole, but these parents are, they're bonkers. Am I the asshole for laughing when my family told me bad news about my sister? So my sister has always been the golden child in my dad's eyes. My parents adopted me thinking that they wouldn't have biological parents. They split when I was 10 and my father went on to have my sister. I'll give her this. She was very intelligent with basically straight A's based on my dad's bragging. Well, my dad expected her to be a doctor or something like that. Very high expectations. My dad for the past year has been paying her rent while she goes to college, even though she works. I called my dad yesterday when he let me know how disappointed he was in my sister. It turns out she's pregnant and has no immediate plans on continuing with her education. And the cherry on top? The father of the baby is only three years younger than me. Now, I'm not happy about my sister's situation. I do not approve of her relationship. Well, I laughed when I found out, because the pressure my father has put on her for the past 19 years, with cheerleading, track, countless diets to keep her skinny, making her give up her dream of being a vet, finally made her crack, and I find it hilarious that he doesn't see that he did it to her, and he thinks he has the right to say he's disappointed. My father, however, took this as me laughing at my sister, but when I explained no, I'm laughing at him, it made things so much worse. My stepmother has been texting me non-stop about how I hurt my father, how he just wanted to vent and as a family, I should support and respect him, and even if I didn't, it was just a genuinely dickish move to laugh. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for being jealous of my boyfriend's cousin? My boyfriend is out of town with his family. He's sort of far away, around eight hours drive from our hometown. He's visiting there with his dad and siblings. They're staying at their grandparents' house and all the cousins are there. He is sharing a room with his female cousin that is the same age as him, and they're sharing a bed. How old did um, they say they were? They never said their ages. Okay. How distant are cousins, are they? She's been hanging off him for the week they've been there. 
she's been sleeping in his shirts, his boxers, etc. Mind you, she lives 25 minutes away, so she could go grab her own things. She wears his swim shorts while swimming, his clothes to bed, his hoodie everywhere. It just seems weird to me. And when I ask how they are related, he doesn't give me an answer and just avoids the question. Hmm. So, are they actually even cousins? I feel so weird about it, and all my friends say I'm overreacting. Maybe I am, since I've never been close with any of my cousins, though. So am I the asshole? I'm the asshole for going on a date with my boyfriend's best friend. We met in college, and we were attached at the hip. We did everything together. We went to the same college, so we saw each other every day. And I really thought that he was the one. Until there was a guy in one of my classes that totally caught my eye. I was assigned to work with him on a project, and I kind of started to fall for him. We hung out a lot because of this project, and it turns out he's one of my boyfriend's friends. I only found this out because I stalked his Instagram and saw a pic of him and my boyfriend. I didn't know my boyfriend's friends yet because we were really private. And this guy did not know I was his best friend's girlfriend, and I wanted to keep it that way. We started getting closer and closer. I made the first move and asked him out. I was still with my boyfriend, though. He said yes, and I was super happy. I knew I needed to break up with my boyfriend, but I was super scared of hurting him. After our first date, we kissed. Fast forward a couple weeks, my boyfriend introduces me to his friends. The guy I went on the date with was there. I mentally freaked out. He didn't say anything, but it was super awkward. I knew then that I should really break up with my boyfriend. We broke up and I started dating his best friend. I obviously feel really bad, but in a way I'm happier. So I'm at the asshole. Am I the a-hole for getting upset my husband left me at home to go clubbing with a friend I hate on his birthday? My husband's birthday was coming up. He and I had made plans to celebrate at home together. I went out earlier in the day to spend a few hundred dollars on fancy food and an expensive alcoholic beverage as a treat. While I was out finalizing plans for delivery of said beverage, he texted to say an old friend of his wanted him to come out that night to go drinking. I seriously dislike this friend, and the friend, while never directly causing an issue, has been the source of encouragement for my husband to drive drunk, get hammered at the club, and so on. I, I say I absolutely don't want to do that, and that I had plans for us, but didn't want to spoil the surprise just yet, so I didn't tell him how much effort or expense I'd gone into it. By the time I got home, he was out pre-gaming and upset I didn't want to spend his birthday with him and the friend at the club. When he got home at 4am after sleeping off some of the drunk under an overpass in his car, I was furious and we got into a shouting match. He said it was my fault I got left behind because I was invited. I was angry at him because I sat at home with his gifts all night not hearing from him and seeing the social media updates from his friend partying up at the club. So am I the a-hole?